call to order the Atna Township Board of Trustees special meeting Tuesday, February 27th, 2024 at 4 p.m. Roll call, please. Trustee Evans. Here. Trustee Burkwater. Here. Trustee McKee. Here. And Julie Barrians excused. Yes. Would you please give the invitation, Ms. McKee? Stand with me and bow your heads, dear Heavenly Father. We thank you for this day of May. We thank you for allowing us to come into this building to take care of the business of the township. We ask you to continue to bless this township. Keep your hand over uh, the township and the households. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the time for public comments. You have uh, three minutes, and your comments will have to pertain to the agenda. Oh, I'm sorry. A motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. Second. Discussion? Uh, the only thing on the agenda for the executive session, are we doing them uh, completely separate? One for the interview and then one for the disciplinary? Yeah, I think. Like coming out and then going I, back I or? think that would be wise. Okay. Yes. I, I thank you. Roll call, please. Jesse Evans? Yes. Jesse Burkholder? Yes. Jesse McKee? Yes. The agenda is adopted. Now's the time for public comments. As I was saying, please keep those comments to items on the agenda. Is there anyone who would like to speak at this time? If so, please come to the podium and state your name and address. Hearing none, the chair will entertain a motion to go into executive session. Uh, I move to go into executive session per ORC 121.22 G1 uh, to consider the employment and discipline uh, of a um, public employee uh, or regulated individual. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKee? Yes. We will go into executive session, the three trustees and Holly Palumbo. And the time is 4 And the time is uh, 6 4 or 3. Thank you. Is there a motion? Is there a motion to come out of the executive session at 4.26 p.m.? I'll make a motion. Motion by Ms. McKee. I'll second. Second by Mr. Evans. Roll Ms. call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKee? Yes. It's 4.27. 4.27. Thank yes. you. And uh, I will move to authorize uh, Trustee Burkholder to enter an agreement and sign outside the meeting and offer uh, Ms. Holly Palumbo the uh, position and for Trustee Burkholder to uh, effectuate that, any paperwork and uh, scheduling in that as he sees fit. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Ms. McKee. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKee? Yes. Passed. Thank you. So you will get with Gary and work for them. So you're welcome to stay, but if you have other things, you're welcome okay. to. Okay, very good. <laughs> and then um, I'll move to uh, re enter into executive session per ORC 121.22 G1 to consider the discipline of uh, public employees. Is there a second? I'll second. Roll call, please. And one discussion. So the first one's really going to be the employment and regulate, and the second one will be your other two. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. Right. You're welcome. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKee? Yes. 
It'll be the three trustees at uh, 428 p.m. Second. At 446 p.m. Roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Porter? Yes. Trustee McKee? Yes. Pass. All right, and I'll uh, move to approve the uh, two disciplinary agreements uh, as, presenting, as presented, authorizing Trustee Evans to uh, sign and effect these outside the meeting. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? No, sir. None. Roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKee? Yes. Pass. Very good. Old business. General, entertain a motion on the National Fitness Campaign NFC Grant Outdoor Fitness Court. Yeah. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion to discuss. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? Uh, yes, um, uh, we had um, months ago when under our administrator, Ms. Hansen that was here had reached out to a national fitness organization. They're like a campaign to purchase a um, exercising kind of equipment, uh, very unique. Um, the only one that's around here is way over in Ohio. So we here at Aetna Township would be um, the only one on this side of the town or even in uh, Central Ohio that would have that equipment. And that's gonna bring us a lot of people to our new park in the future. Um, it's exciting, it's uh, low impact. Uh, we had a um, discussion on this months ago with the board and we decided to pass that we would um, participate and we were able to get a $30,000 grant. Um, I'm excited that we are getting some kind of funds to go towards the equipment for the uh, township. I think it's a good thing. Um, I know there were some questions that our a prosecutor asked, and um, if you wanted me to bring those up and sure. have a discussion. Please, please okay. do so. Um, one of the questions she had asked about the interest rate, there is no interest rate. The only interest rate would be if our Fiscal officer does not make the payment by a particular date, and it's a one-time payment. So there wouldn't be an interest rate as long as she makes that payment. And I have confidence that she'll make that payment in 30 days. Um, the other question the prosecutor talked about shipping and packing and insurance, there's no extra cost for that. Um, that's included in the cost. Um, so that's the other question she had for us, Mr. Burkholder. Uh, let's see what else is here. Oh, contract. Okay, because this is a campaign, there's no contract for this um, NFC. Um, this is just a campaign. It's a one time. They're not really a vendor. Again, it's a campaign. So there's no fixed um, um, contract at all. So we can make sure you're aware of that and the board's aware of that. Um, as far as the ADA access, um, they, the company, NFC, will provide us with the install, installer that installs the equipment that has the um, ADA H accessibility to pour in place for an installation. They're all a part of that. They are actually um, approved by the NFC. So we don't have to worry about that. Um, also, the additional $40,000 is for a, con a concrete pour 
that the equipment sits on. We will be responsible before that, but there is a concrete specs that works directly with the installer that meets those specs, and they will provide that as well. The installer will provide that to the contracting company that does the pour concrete. Um, as far as the guidelines, they will be provided. An example, when you go to a gym, they usually have some postings of like a um, disclaimer type um, for safety rules. They will be posted around on the equipment itself. So that is included by the installer. As we went through there, these are all the questions our prosecutor had. Five, uh, I think we could talk about five, about the purchase of the legal and owner of the of the landowners we're willing to abide by the obligation. That's something we can discuss as a board. Um, tomorrow there is a Zoom call with the organization NFC and they're willing to answer additional questions if we need to as a board. So hopefully you got your, you guys got a, a Zoom invite today or if not yesterday to be on a call tomorrow with them. But all of these were addressed by the uh, NFS. What's, when is the uh, payment due and how much is it? Um, you got that. We, you know, we <clears> moved <throat> the date for that because we didn't know we were going to get that on that special meeting today. Right. Um, so since we did, but she had already moved it to September, I'm sorry, September, I'm thinking September, uh, March 7th. So that's when that payment will do. She's going to send out an invoice and um, then our fiscal officer can send them, send them the check with the invoice. Mr. Evans, do you have any comments? Yes, Ms. Ms. McKee, has the uh, NCA been contacted regarding this purchase? Oh, yeah, we were on the phone. Yep. Yes, we were. Mm -hmm. That's where I got those questions answered from him. Okay, because I, I think we're j jumped the gun a little bit uh, for any reimbursement through the NCA, which that was created basically um, uh, to help fund this park. Correct. That those have to be pre-approved before it's got to be an agreement that those funds are going to be used for that before it they're spent so i don't think we should be spending anything because this is uh over two hundred thousand dollars that uh could be paid for through the nca and not the township proper uh not the township general fund uh the other concern i have is i mean we're just talking about doing the lot split and everything right now uh park design I don't think we're, we're anywhere close to that. Uh, I mean, we, we still have uh, open seats on there and as, as I'm aware that none of the applicants were contacted uh, that submitted interest in that. Um, a concern is the storage of this. It's 11,000 pounds and in an area about 15 by 15 or 20 by 20 mm -hmm. that they'll mm -hmm. expect us to store it. Mm -hmm. I think um, with the timeline when we would actually be able to install it, creates quite a, um, I guess, hassle, but also uh, possible damage to it uh, for over a year where they can be hit and that, and these do weigh quite a bit. One, one crate is 1,500 pounds, another one 1,100 pounds, 5,000 pounds of tile pallets. Um, so if our, our crew even just needed to move them around, it would be hassle. Now this grant is an ongoing program. Uh, it's available next year. Uh, the opening for 2025 funding is, uh, I believe, June, and they would award it in next January or February. Uh, it's a first come, first serve. It's not like they uh, look at your community, see if you're deserving of this. They just, if you want it, they're going to give it to you. Um, I, I would, for those reasons, uh, table this for now, reapply for it next year to see when we're doing this because it's not like we're. this is gonna be the first thing that goes into that park. I think we're gonna have access roads, we're gonna have a lot of things, we gotta do it in conjunction with that. It's a good plan. Um, you know, I brought it up back in 22, so I'm for it, but I think we, we shouldn't be spending it. It should go through the NCA process and then also we should delay it uh, towards when we're going to need it. And then I also talked to the representative, uh, Leia, uh, previously it was David, uh, I forget his last name, but even working with the schools, uh, there's the design artwork on the one side. You could do the general graphics 
you can have prominent artists to it however within our package it allows uh, like the graphic design art students uh, in our high schools to provide the design That's nice. and, and give yeah. them a little buy into this and I, I think uh, doing it now you could still do that but like I said for all those reasons I think we should delay this until the 2025 Okay, I, I just want to make it clear. Mr. Evans just mentioned that he tried it back in 2022. Um, so we brought it back. Um, it's going to it, uh, either 15 by 20 or 20 by 20. We have the storage over in the garage. I've already checked with Mr. Bubba about that. So we have the space to store it. Um, they are aware that it's a 2025 install. Um, they got us pre-approved for that. So they're okay with that. Uh, Mr. Evans, you voted for us to get put the money in on this on our last vote, just back in December. I have the minutes to you voted, apply for the you grant, had, but the timing is yes, what I'm exactly. Talking you about. voted for us to get the grant and also to spend money toward the two hundred seventeen thousand. Yes, you did. It's in the minutes. So, um, and just to be clear, we hired EMHMT um, Jim. Jim um, is it Yankovic? He yes. is very familiar with this equipment he's he's installed this at another park the one in xenia um, so he's very familiar with the layout how it should be laid out where it should go um, very confident i had conversations with him about it um, so i'm very confident we land putting this in our beautiful new park to come will be a great thing again it will bring attractions to the township um, it's one of a kind in the area so I think we should move forward because we did vote on this, Mr. Evans, you, you had a buy-in on it. And so now all of a sudden you're, you're, you're saying something different, but you did vote for it. You voted for 217,000 and you also voted for me to apply for the grant, which I did um, because our administrator that's no longer with us couldn't do it. So we pushed that I would go ahead and apply for it and I did. So we were successful to get to $30,000. Mike, I have a few questions. Um, the NCA stands for the New Community Authority. So, Ms. McKee, did you enter, you say they were on the phone oh, call? Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I meant, I meant to say NFC. No, I have NFC. not spoken uh, that's to That's what them. I thought. That's yeah, I'm thought. sorry. I I'm clear that up yeah. for the record. But this um, has to be installed by the end of 2025, correct? Correct. correct. And, and it's, and, a, it's 165000 that we have to pay within 30 days, correct? Yep, and it was approved by the board, the well, previous board. And, and, and I agree, and I, I'm, I'm all for parks. I've managed parks in some of my other positions, and so I'm excited about the possibilities, but I too have some concerns. First of all, we don't even know where we're gonna put it in the park. That's right. And we don't have a road to get into the park. Right, but it, it will be stored in, in, in our garage. Yeah, we I, find out what we want to so that. I'm not against the proposal, but I don't think the timeline works. Okay, that's fine. Because, so I'm, I'm more in favor of tabling it and revisiting, and I'll tell you why. The road, the extension of the road off of 310 next to Drayton Hall, that remaining section has been estimated somewhere around four to five hundred thousand dollars. <throat> so, um, I'm familiar with park planning. Like I said, it sounds like a good project. But until we get a master plan for the park and until we map and document where the wetlands are, we're not even sure where this, this uh, event would go. And it does have restrictions. It can't be too close to a school. It's got to have uh, paths built to it. Yep. So if you put it in the park and we don't have a path to it, it's not in compliance. And so I, it's, it's very detailed, the proposal, but I think it's premature at this time simply because we're not ready to move forward. So I guess my only other question is, do we know when the park, and, and by the way, Mr. Evans, I hope that we, I think we'll have, that'll be on the next agenda to try to get the applicants for the park committee. Okay. I'm, I'm, I was just surprised that, that they weren't even contacted. Well, they haven't. They haven't been contacted with a number of things, but I plan to contact them. In fact, I have them in the file. Those who applied uh, to add to the committee. So uh, that's my concern at this time. I support it, but I don't want to get a situation we spend one hundred sixty-five thousand and store it, and then we can't 
get it in. I don't think we'll be able it to won't be start. A problem installing it. It won't. We have the land. We have, we have the land. But we do not have a master plan. Yeah, we don't. You're right. But and we don't, don't have the funding. The funding has not been identified to add that roadway to get access. And we don't even know how far we're going to put it into the. You can get to the edge of the park. But the real question is where are you going to put it in the park? Well, I'm going to make it clear. Mr. Evans voted for it. And, I understand. And, um, and I just it. for him to say that we didn't reach out to the uh, committee. Um, he voted for it, so I, and that's I, an excuse, but that's fine. No, that's correct. That's I, I, I just quickly to clarify, I voted to apply for the grant that, and if we could, I didn't say that, yeah, we're going to store it, we're going to do all this. That, that's where timing comes in. Well, and there's no problem, Ms. McKee, please, there's no problem. And I, I spoke to the representative of doing this next year. It's available. It's not going away. And uh, in 22, it was October, I just wanted a discussion and the board refused to even discuss this. That, so, that was all. Mr. So, Evans, what is your recommendation? Uh, I recommend that we... Uh, or your motion. Uh, my motion is to uh, deny the purchase at this time um, for... Um, well, we have a resolution, correct? We have a resolution? Yeah. That was your motion, is that correct? Correct. At this time to pass the resolution? Yes. Oh, we, she, she moved to pass her. I didn't hear her. Well, her uh, was this merely discussion or do you want to? You, you had a motion on the floor. Yeah. Rosalind moved and Mark seconded it. To discuss. Discussion on the NFC. To discuss the resolution. The resolution was not mentioned. Right, but you have a motion on the floor that right. hasn't discussion. been voted on. Right. So we've discussed it now. So the yes. question is. Do you want to clarify that it's, are we going to table this project or do you want to move forward with the resolution that you prepared, Mrs. McKee? I would love to move forward. I mean, it's an opportunity for the township to get the 30,000. Well, mean, then, then amend, then I'll entertain, the chair will entertain a motion to amend the original, original resolu uh, motion to include uh, passage or the the uh, resolution that you prepared but I'll need an amendment so that we can make clarify this that we're actually going to be voting on the resolution that all three trustees have been presented with so is there a motion to amend the original motion the main motion okay. you're asking for us to amend the resolution to do what well the resolution well table. mr evans is correct the motion was to discuss it it wasn't it wasn't to pass your resolution right it was a discussion that's correct okay gary i don't have that exact when we sent down to the prosecutor's office but i think this is the language on your if you want me to go print that hand i didn't know you were going to need that resolution tonight i thought the prosecutor's office was reviewing it well, those are the questions from the prosecutor. She did review them. That's why I was able to answer those what questions. What I'm saying is if you need that resolution, I can go print what I sent out. This, I think, is the wording on it, though. Is that necessary, or can I move to amend the motion? You can move. I'll move to amend uh, the motion to uh, table the grant uh, until the next funding cycle. Second. Is there further discussion on the amendment? No discussion. Hearing none, the roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkhorn? Yes. Trustee McKee? No. And then a vote on the motion? Well, yes. Because that was just an amendment. Yeah, I'll vote on the main motion then, which is basically the table. Main motion as amended for the record? Yes. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKee? No. Okay. Under new business, we've already taken care of the administrative assistant with that motion, and now we have the lot split request by Mr. Hodge. Mr. Hodge, uh, you have the floor. I can approach Mr. Burkholder. I have you, you may, and I also want to give for you and Mr. 
Langle, these documents, which has to do with the minor land, that's the lot split, which we completed, and there's a copy for you. Mm -hmm. And we'll file the original, or maybe you can file the original. Yeah, that gives me the opportunity oh, to great. Paper. put it into uh, open copy. Keep the county moving with that process. Thank you. I've got several copies if anybody would like to have one. I don't want to leave. Thank you. Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Is that one, sir? the opportunity to be here tonight. Uh, David Lodge on behalf of the developer of the Langle Farm. And uh, state your address, yeah, please. 8,000 Milton Parkway, Suite 260, New Albany, Ohio, 43054. Um, I'm going to meander around a little bit. I, I gave the board a series of exhibits uh, in no particular order. I just thought it might be beneficial as we move back and forth. Uh, across these exhibits to add a number so that you know what I'm talking about and be able to get to page number. Uh, the, the, the item listed on the agenda uh, for this tonight is the lot split. So we'll start there and, and meander around. The, the first exhibit in the package I gave you is a meets and bounds legal description of 19.43 acres which constitutes the park property that uh, would be transferred to Aetna Township under an existing agreement uh, between the Langle family and Aetna. That agreement, I think it got entered into in 2021, and I've been back before this board a number of times in you know, generally six month increments to get that extended. Um, you'll recall the, the, all of you in the room Although Mr. Burke Holder, I don't think you were on the board last time. We, um, the present extension is, is up to June 1st of this year. So that's the first exhibit in here um, listed as exhibit one. The, the, the longer page does is the survey of the property, and you can see exactly where that 19.43 acres is in relation to the balance of the Langle property uh, here on the west side. The reason, and really, really the crux of, of what we're trying to do with the board is the plat is not fully approved by Lincoln County yet. And, you know, if there's anybody to blame for that, I'll take the blame. <laughs> It's been, a, it's been quite a, a, a long slog for me to work through the Lincoln County process. Uh, I had all of my focus and attention on getting the uh, construction plans approved. Those are also, uh, I think we've all been provided those separately, but that's also in your packet as some later exhibits. Those construction plans are approved through the Lincoln County process, signed by everybody, the property owners, us, planning, engineering, the township, and so what those plans allow us to do is to commence construction. If we called Licking County and said we're going to commence in, you know, 30 days, we could go out there with bulldozers and start, you know, demoing the buildings and, and doing the project. But we don't have the plat proof. And the plat is an important part of this. It was, the, it, was, it was to be the mechanism by which the township got transferred the property. And it talks about... Uh, the pond and the outlets for the pond and the necessary use of the of the park property in furtherance of the development on the adjacent property. And so uh, because we need to close on this transaction uh, with the Langle family, we soon, <laughs> we are asking that the board um, accept uh, a deed that reserves for us a blanket easement that's temporary to allow us to do everything in furtherance of the plat, which is also in your package, 
uh, until the plat is completed. And once the plat is completed, that temporary blanket easement would expire by operation of law, and all of the easements detailed on the plat that's on file with Lincoln County would, would replace that temporary blanket easement and then be in place. Um, so let me, I guess, show you specifically where that is um, in the documents that I've given you. If you look over to Exhibit 4, that is the deed that, that we propose that we close with. Um, you can see some red lining on the front of the deed. That's to go back and add in, you know, parcel number, instrument number. When it was originally done, it had the wrong county on it. And then flip back to page three, section A there uh, says exactly what I just now said about the temporary blanket, blanket easement, about that blanket easement expiring by operation of law upon the recording of the plat. The second part of the language there, B, is language that Licking County has said that they would require uh, be included in the, in the deed. So that's why uh, that language is in there. Um, what else? Um, flip back over to Exhibit 2. And Exhibit 2 is, is, is the original agreement that goes back to 21, I believe. And I've, I've highlighted some things on there. And that's really just to, to, to show to the board and to, and to have the board recall um, that when this um, deal was originally struck, that the idea was for these properties to work together, that the development property is working with the, the park property and vice versa, kind of as a master planning effort. That's the, that's the highlighted portion there on the first page. The highlighted portions back on the second page talk about sort of our obligations to one another, um, our need to you know, get sewer and water service secured for the property, our need to get the subdivision uh, approvals necessary, uh, or the contract terminates. Obviously, we don't want the contract to terminate. That's why I've been here in these six month increments to extend this to make sure that this uh, uh, component of your overall park uh, happens and uh, happens within the timelines uh, of our obligations to the Lango family and also the obligations between the Lango family uh, and the township. I've also included in here, just for your reference, that recent uh, agreement. That is the most recent amendment that takes us out to June the 1st. Um, exhibits 5, 6, and 7. Uh, 5 is the plat that's on file with the county. It's in. Uh, it's been reviewed by all county agencies. Our civil engineers, you know, any day now, will have the revisions back submitted to the county uh, per the engineer and planning. And uh, I think CJ over at uh, Sewer and Water had a had a note he needed us to add, so that process is underway. And then six and seven are the final site engineering construction and the road improvements that are that have been fully through the county process. Uh, a little bit a, a, about that county process. When we came here and got zoning permits years ago now and have worked We've tried to work diligently through the Licking County process. It's been, it's been a long, difficult slog, and we're still, unfortunately, in it. But we've, we've diligently worked at it. You know, hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of dollars have been spent in terms of the necessary plan preparation. You can flip through these detailed construction plans. I mean, that's a civil engineer preparing that, submitting that to Licking County Planning, all county agencies reviewing that telling us what we need to revise, our civil engineers making those revisions, resubmitting, and this back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. We've gone here across a couple of years to, to get to where we are on these construction plans. But again, those are, those are fully uh, approved. Um, the last thing, and then I'm going to shut up and open up my ears and do my best to answer any questions that the board has. But the last thing I want to talk about a little bit is the, is the pond that is uh, going to be on the township's park property. Now, you know, good, bad, and different, whether you agree with it or whether you disagree with it, 
Um, that is the deal that got struck back years ago. At that point in time, the purpose of that pond was to provide what was then seen as, a, as an amenity to the park. Uh, it was sized accordingly to take all the runoff off of the development uh, parcel. The thought was that it would be uh, aesthetic, that it would be, you know, potentially be stocked with fish, guys could go back in there and fish, and that it would be um, an amenity to your, to your new park. So that's how it is that it, that it ended up getting there. Whether you agree with that or disagree with that, that's the deal that, that, that all about struck. Um, the form of deed, which you have as, as the other exhibit I talked about, that's in exhibit two, talked about the long-term maintenance of that pond. And at the time the deal was struck, that form of deed said that the maintenance of that pond was going to be 50-50. It's going to be 50% by the township and 50% by the development portion of the property. Um, so part of what we'd like to do and part of the discussion here these last several days is been about how that pond gets maintained and apparently some other ponds, uh, other locations in the township have not been adequately maintained and have become an issue and, and so um, we, we want to make sure that that's not the case here and um, a couple things have happened in the, in the week or so leading up to, to me being here tonight. Uh, the first thing is the maintenance of the pond is not going to be 50-50. The maintenance of the pond is going to be born 100% by the development portions of this property. So that's the first thing, and that's important. And that's a little bit of a change in this form of deed. Um, and that's, if anybody wants to look at precisely where that is, I'll show you exactly where that language is, and it's stricken in that form of deed. Would you like me to do, would yes, you like please. to look at that? Where is that located? Okay. Yeah. So go into Exhibit 2 and flip all the way back Oh, I, I, I think I highlighted it. Yeah, go all the way back to page 8. And that statement, that statement there, the highlighted in green concludes by saying, it says that the, that the development portion of the property is going to maintain yada, 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 but shall be reimbursed for 50% of the cost thereof by buyer at least once annually, the buyer in this case being at the township. So that was the original agreement. But uh, that's not what's going to happen. It's going to be born 100% by the development portion of the property. And I know this is important to, to, to all of you, and um, the question might be, well, how is that going to happen? <laughs> and it's a good question, it's a fair question, and I'm, I'm glad I've been pushed on it um, this last week or so, and, and, and Mr. Burke pushed me on it a little bit. And um, we had a meeting last week uh, with Lincoln County Planning. Thank goodness Jared Nurr was in that meeting, your county engineer, and Jared Nurr said uh, this pond needs to be on the ditch maintenance program. And I want everybody to know what that means. <laughs> I'm a zoning guy. I've had to learn what ditch maintenance means here this last week and some today. I actually had conversations with Franklin County Engineer and spent a half an hour earlier today on the phone with Jared Nurr uh, so that I could um, bone up on this issue a little bit myself. And what, what it means is the county uh, commissioners, in conjunction with the county engineer, and certainly with at the township leadership's participation, is going to decide what it's going to take to maintain this pond. Um, that's done with civil engineers and you know cost estimates and maintenance and all that. <laughs> then, once the once the county commissioners uh, take up the the, the the petition, the ditch maintenance petition. Uh, 
every year when the owners of this property, the adjacent property, the development portion of the property, pay their taxes, so it's going to come right on their tax bill. Uh, there is a there is an increment on that tax bill that is set aside that goes into a separate bucket of money to pay for the county engineer to do the ongoing maintenance uh, of that pond. Now. I know some other ponds in the township and other places, certainly in Lincoln County, have failed through the years. A lot of those ponds historically were the maintenance obligation of owners associations, and those owners associations have failed to fulfill their obligations or have money issues or whatever the case may be, and some of those ponds have failed. Uh, in this case, there's going to be an added tax to the development portion of the property under that ditch maintenance petition program that pays for the maintenance. Uh, of the pond. Now, I included an exhibit on this, and if you go all the way back to the far back of the package, it's listed as Exhibit 8. Uh, and this is a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's, it's issued by the uh, County Engineers Association of Ohio. But if you flip back into that, there's one uh, spot that I put there in green and it talks about maintenance. And what it says is the Board of County Commissioners must establish and maintain a fund for the repair, upkeep, and permanent maintenance of each improvement constructed under the, prevented, uh, under the provisions of the drainage laws. Whatever the board from its own observations or the recommendation of the county engineer, or, and this next part is very important, or on the written complaint of any of the owners of lands subject to to said maintenance assessment has reason to believe such improvement is in need of repair or maintenance, it will, as a board or by the county engineer, make an inspection of the condition. So essentially what that means is if anybody, the elected officials of Etna Township or anybody else, believes that, that pond is not being adequately maintained, call in, makes an inspection happen, come out, do the inspection if remedial measures are necessary for that pond maintenance, that ends up being an additional tax on the adjacent a portion the, the adjacent property owners to pay for that pond maintenance. So uh, I was instinctively thrilled when I heard Mr. Nur suggest the ditch maintenance petition program, and I think that it is uh, the simplest and most effective way to make sure that this pond gets gets maintained appropriately in perpetuity. And it's not just a situation where you know somebody willy-nilly is going to go out and make an annual inspection. It is a situation where uh, f folks that believe that pond is not adequately maintained, and people are going to know it when it's ultimately in this park, you know, kind of uh, adjacent to the drive aisle. They're going to know if that pond is not getting maintained. Call in an inspection and make sure that it gets done at the at, at the owners of the property's uh, expense. Um. The owners of the property's expense. So the owners will be the partners. Excuse me. Go ahead. Um, a couple of things, and I'm going to stop. Um, this agreement, as I mentioned, got struck, you know, a long time ago now, 2021. The Langle family, uh, many of whom are here with me tonight, um, agreed to transfer that portion of the property over to the township for in the neighborhood of $17,000 an acre. Uh, it's a great deal for, for the township. It's a, it is a sale, and, and we'll not dispute that it's a sale, but there is also an element of donation associated with it because the market value of that property uh, uh, is much more than $17,000 an acre. Uh, some might say, well, it's got power lines through it, and that's a detriment to it. Um, but in the day of uh, power and all the discussions going on around power and the need for new substations and uh, with the advent of data centers in, in New Albany and other locations, Tasla, um, the residual value of that park land is, is far greater than $17,000 an acre. So it is, um, it is a sale, but it's also uh, largely a contribution and, and frankly always was. Um, so, I guess I'll stop there. I've thrown a whole lot at you. Uh, let me let me just throw let me, let me one more element. And I thought that this ship had already sailed, but possibly not. 
Um, I, I know there was a meeting last week or the week before, and you talked about uh, construction of the road. Uh, Mr. Burkholder alluded to that, I think, earlier in a, in a discussion on one of the other subjects. Um, my client is, building, is, is willing to build that road. Um, the cost estimates vary. Uh, the engineer's cost estimate is, I don't know, 450 or 500. It's, it's, that's proving to be low in terms of the bids we've received. I've provided that, those bids to um, the township. Um, I, I have not provided them to you, uh, trustee. I send them out. Okay, so, this, so that everybody has those. And we, we have bids from TLV, who is really the preferred contractor for my client. And we have bids from Complete General, and Complete General is likely going to uh, end up being a selected contractor. And so the actual cost of that road is more in the neighborhood of, of that leg of road is more in the neighborhood of five hundred and fifty to six hundred thousand dollars. I did not bring those with me, but you guys have all yeah. hopefully had an opportunity. I sent them out recently, so I don't know if they've checked. I sent that email that had those documents attached to the other trustees. So, so that is something we're willing to do. We're we're, we're willing to construct that road um, and get paid for the actual cost by the township and have you. You know, get your separate bids, check our bids, but we're willing to build that. Just it, it creates some efficiencies. It gets the road back in there. Um, I know that you guys have evaluated the road. You've evaluated the possibility, at least high level, of taking the road in to the north on the JBW property and the property you own up there. I personally don't think that's feasible because JBW owns the, the vast majority of that frontage and then the northern portion of the property has the power easement through it. The other access to the park would come in through Smoke Road, but it's my understanding that Smoke Road access is a way back negotiation, litigation settlement, and Wilcox communities ended up transferring that uh, property over to the township. There are t uh, topographical issues back there. There are stream crossing issues back there. So taking your access in through Smoke Road would be uh, extraordinarily expensive. I'll stop there, Mr. Evans. Thank you. Okay. I, if it's okay. I, yeah, yes, Mr. Evans. Uh, in the let, me, let me clarify oh. one thing. The, the, on the agenda, and I've given you latitude, which I think has been very helpful, because I wanted you to recall or present uh, some of the recent history, and I did attend the Lincoln County meeting last night, in, I mean uh, last week in person at that Zoom meeting as well, and I think that's a, a correct recap of that i will have some comments regarding the the ditch petition uh, petition later but the items tonight will be about the spot uh, lot split request which could you just before you get your question in there mr evans could you explain what that lot split request we have the document here i think for the record so that the trustees and everyone in attendance understand how that works and how that has to take place first Yes, the, so as it relates to the plat, correctly. Correct? Yes. So, so the lot split request is for the 19.4 acres, which is the, which is the the park property, and that would allow that lot split to get to go through the Lincoln County process uh, to get approved, hopefully, and allow that uh, parcel to be split out, so removed from label ownership and combined with Aetna Township ownership of your property to the north, formerly the JBW property. And that's required in order for Licking County to sign off on the plat. And the document that I gave you earlier, that's one of the conditions that that has to be connected to the lot to the north. And that has to happen first, and it has to be part then of the Drayton Hall Flat. Yes. Is that correct? That is correct. All that's correct. Correct. So that's why we're here to do to do that. That's the first step. Correct. And then the second step, and then I'll go to questions from uh, the trustees, is that Bricker Graydon represents my client, your client, and that's also our council. So the question is. The trustees, and I wanted to bring it to, well, I have to bring it to the board, is if you sign a legal waiver, that would say that the township agrees and his client agreed that the attorney could represent both parties to try to get this resolved. Now, let me say, I'm, I'm new to this. 
I mean, I've been around a couple years listening to this discussion, but I wasn't as familiar with a lot of the details and the nuances. And I think it is important that we try to, of course, we have till June 1st, but I know there's a desire to close on this property much sooner than that. So I thought it made sense to try to bring these types of issues and begin to get some of these steps knocked out so that we can move to that final acquisition and closing on this property. So with that, the second thing would be the legal waiver. So now I'll defer to you, Mr. Evans, if you have questions or comments. Yes, I do, Mr. Hodge. The original purchase agreement had 20.4 acres. Yes. It's now 19.4. That's correct. Yeah. Why, why was that yeah. reduced? So, or? so I, I mentioned to you, Mr. Evans, that this thing has been through, you know, a several year process in terms of working through, uh, you know, with Lincoln County Planning, with Lincoln County Engineering, and somewhere along the way, the the acreage uh, being transferred over to the township and, and the acreage being developed got mixed up in that uh, that planning process. So the acreage is presently 19.4. It was previously 20 and change. All of that is shown in your exhibit two. That that original 20 acres is shown in your exhibit two. And, you know, I don't know uh, if it was an issue of starting the process in the county without the benefit of with the, without the engineers having the benefit of the survey that was done for the park property or, or what that issue is. But at this point in time, after having been through the, 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 the couple year process with, with Lincoln County, uh, having those approved construction plans, where this ended up is the 19.4 is the acres. Okay, because I don't, I, I've been to, I think most every trustee meeting before I was a trustee when this was going on and I don't remember any discussion <laughs> changes. The original plot park map shows a section going through the Langle property two three ten that was changed to I did when did all that change? Which one? I didn't understand that part. There was have to come up and yeah sure come up. This was the original land plot shown, and then they changed it to have access to three ten through JBW. To I just didn't know when that was change because it wasn't during the meetings and i know we can't go back but i'm just trying yeah. to understand this i don't know I, that's, process. I, I, I somewhat remember that and i don't know why that that exhibit didn't get created by me that you just had up there correct and so you know i don't know but that's that's an example of of really the evolution of of, of this okay. process over the over the course of the last two and a half years I, you know i wish i had a firm grasp <laughs> on everything that's happened these last years okay. but but i just don't yeah but, that's but, but the acreage and i'm glad and i'm glad you mentioned that and i mentioned that when when we when i met that's, Mr. that's Burr, correct a week or two ago that's that correct. the acreage is now 19 19.4 acres and that was discussed at the licking county meeting last okay. week but there was no real right. explanation on when that change took place right and then regarding the ditch petition yes sir. now how is that is that going to work with that actually on our property but you're saying the adjacent property is going to pay for that correct that is allowable that is yes yes and we're not paying any portion of that you are not okay uh, not. well unless we let let me kind of clarify that unless we actually drain into that if there's drainage sometimes that gets assessed to the township as well for you. it just depends who who, okay. who drains in on the watershed i mean i have some familiarity with okay. that the concern I have, and I guess I'll interject it at this time, is that uh, according to the county engineer, and I know it to be a fact, they only come in once a year, once a year, to mow and maintain that, if that. So uh, how they arrived at that funding, I don't know. Um, one of the things that Mr. Hodge and I talked about, and he had talked one time, if there's an association for the, the apartments plus the outlots that they could if they have a fee that they pay every year that that could be used to supplement the maintenance of the pond because having been here 20 years I, I'm very familiar with what Mr. Hodge said the lack of maintenance on these and mowing that and maintaining that once a year in my opinion is not adequate so that's one of the sticking points I had that yes there is the ditch petition but by the county engineer's own admission um, there and I know because I live next door to a ditch that's maintained by the county they will only come in once so if it's an amenity 
or if it's meant to be an amenity and a beautification of the park ground, then it's going to it's going to take regular maintenance. Maybe not every week, but at least every couple of weeks. And then there's also a concern if it's not maintained, you're going to get mosquitoes and vermin. So things like aeration of that pond and other things I think are important, and that's what I wanted to point out. And we've talked about that, but that's kind of a recent discussion we've had. I know that that probably hasn't been discussed in the past. But what we're just dealing with is a simple lot split, all that other Kissel ditch, but all that's later. Correct. Well, we'd like to we'd like to get these things resolved as quickly as possible. I believe you'd like to have this on the next regular meeting for the. No, but I'm saying just today. Today, so today, today okay. we're dealing we can, with this, but I felt that that background would be helpful, and that's why I wanted you to present. And yeah, okay. I've I've got no other questions. But if just I, put the I lot gotta, split in that. Yeah, so. let me. Well, I want to talk about it all, guys. <laughs> well, you've because, got we've got a six o'clock meeting too, okay. so we got to get through this. Yeah, um, you know. We want to close this deal. We want to transfer this 19.4 acres to, to Edna Township as, as, as the last piece of your park. We can all sit here and debate, you know, whether the park's even appropriate for Edna Township and, and you know, how much it's going to cost and, and, and all that. But um, the decision to, to acquire this property, these properties for the park got made and this ship has been sailing you know sometimes with, with, the, with the wind at our back and sometimes the wind at our face but it's been it's been sailing this direction uh all, all along we need to close with the langle family uh i told them that we're closing <laughs> we had to get a contract okay. no okay but friday we had an amendment with the langle family that operated separate from the langle family's agreement with you guys to to get an extension we were yeah, no contract goes for three years like this is gone. The Lango family has held in there with us, 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 and um, has it, haven't even increased the price on us, and haven't increased the price on you guys. They've held in there with us all the time. Uh, now, Mrs. Lango and Bill have a, have a home that they need to buy. Yes. So just a, the only thing legally we can address today is the lot split because it's a special meeting of that. So and, and the waiver. With, and the, and the waiver, but as far as anything closing, I, I, we can't address. So not, I'm all for today. moving the process forward, but I, I, I think it. We Ms. can't discuss it. We can't decide it today. It's lots of Ms. McKee, do you have anything? I don't. Okay. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, lot split request as presented. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? You move I'll move. Sign. Yes. Any discussion on that? Uh, the only thing do we, uh, does that give you the authority to effectuate any agreements that outside the meeting, or do you want to add that, amend it? Well, actually, it's normally handled by the zoning inspector, uh, but I wanted to bring it, and he signed off on it, so it's administrative. Okay. But I wanted to bring it to the board so everything's documented, and I wanted to make the board aware of what that does. Okay, that's and fine. And that has to be done to move forward with the plat so that they can close on we can close on the park property and they can begin construction and that's the goal to close on the park land and then to get the plat and so that they can move on to construction is that correct that, Mr. That, that, that is correct and let me let me say this this plat this plat process is going to continue to play out over an extended period of time the plat actually doesn't go down and get recorded until the construction's done that's and correct. inspected that's and, correct. and all that so so we've got time to work on the plat and we've got time to work on this ditch maintenance. Um, the township leadership will have a seat at the table when we talk about what that maintenance needs to be. And to the extent, you know, additional money needs to get your tag that goes on to the real estate taxes for the development portion of this property to do that maintenance, we're all going to be sitting there at the table uh, with the county commissioners to, to um, uh, decide together exactly what goes in that. Now, I don't mean we're going to go out there and create an ice skating rink, do all kinds of other stuff. We're going to do reasonable maintenance on it, but we understand that you've got a concern. We understand that this needs to be an amenity, and, and we're here standing at the table saying that we're, going to, that we're going to do all those things. Any further discussion on the motion? None. I'll call the question. Roll call, please. Mark Evans? Yes. Gary Burkholder? Yes. Rosalind McKee? Yes. Yes. Pass. Is there a motion to engage in a legal waiver with 
Rickard Graydon to represent both parties to move this project forward. I'll move. Is there a second? Second for discussion. Go ahead, Ms. McCreed. You have some questions, comments? The, so I know they represent the Langle family. Well, Mr. Hodges' client, Mr. Hodges' right. client, which is the developer, okay. correct? Right. Yes. Right. Yes. And you're saying that we're going. This is the same firm that represents the township. As that well. is correct. So, my concern is, why are we using a firm that's representing the other party? Why aren't we using a, a different firm? For instance, Peter Briggs' office. That's who's, that's who's he's been working with all along. Okay. Well, we could use a different firm, and that's why I wanted to bring it to the board. But at the time that we switched over to Bricker Graydon, I was not aware that that, that same firm was. And, 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 this, and the thing about the Griggs' office, I've been working with them all along, so they're very, very close. Mr. President? Yes, go ahead. Uh, there was another firm that worked on this. Do you, do you recall the name? I, I Mr. do, Mr. That, that attorney, well, we could check with that firm, but that, uh, Nick, uh, what was Nick's, he's with your firm now. Yeah, Cavaliers. Is oh, I was with firm. Cavaliers, yeah. What firm was he with though, previously? Because that, you are correct, Mr. Evans. So we were using, already using an attorney, because I believe they were recommended by the prosecutor, correct? I talked to Nick a little bit today at the office about this issue. He was, he was, Nick represented the township and he was deputized by Licking County as a prosecutor. And then the count, then at the township was also using a gentleman by the name of Matt Stewart, who was then in the Licking County Prosecutor's Office. And that had to do with, you know, all of generally the, the park exhibit you just now showed me, acquiring those, working through some of the nuances with Licking County planning to, to get all that assemblage done. But Nick, Nick is now with, with our office. The other law firm, I, 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 this is my third, this is my third at the township um, leadership regime here since, since this uh, development started. Um, there have been three different law firms involved since this started. It started with um, Albers and Albers and with the Brocious Johnson and Griggs. Uh, now is at Bricker Graydon. Also the involvement of the county prosecutor. Uh, and we're just we're just along for the ride. We're trying to we're trying to see this thing through and bring it to, and bring it to fruition. I know I talk too much, guys. Right. I'll, I'll stop. But you know we're. Yeah, well, that, that was just my question. Of well, if, they're, if they were available, but it looks like they've joined the firm. And I mean, I don't. I think we're at the, the tail end of this. I uh, have confidence in uh, Bricker and Graydon uh, to represent fairly in that. And they're, they're obviously very familiar with this. So it, it's not a lot of time for someone to get up to speed. Uh, so to kind of bring this home, uh, I think we should approve that waiver and, and just keep moving forward. Ms. McKay, I want to give you the last word if you have. But I, I do agree. That was a great question and a concern of why we. So if there's no further discussion, I'll ask for a roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKay? No. Okay. Motion passes. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. I'll second. Roll call, please. Trustee Evans? Yes. Trustee Burkholder? Yes. Trustee McKay? Yes. Adjourned at 5.44. Thank you.